Well, hello, Zion Lutheran and friends. Here we are on Facebook Live this evening. Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday evening, August 9th, 2020. I'm here alone tonight. No one else is going to be joining me tonight. Uh, Jacob, uh, we've had a little change in our uh, worship schedule. Jacob's doing praise music tonight at 6.30, and Rachel has another obligation this evening, so she's not able to join us, and so does Chez. So she was in earlier and recorded a couple children's messages for the two next two weeks. Um, tonight was a night where we recorded two services. Uh, we recorded uh, for this coming Sunday, the 16th, and we are already recorded for uh, next Sunday, the 23rd, just because our recording team is also the Main Street Living Team, and the Main Street Living Team has to go to Pier and Rapid next Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to record pastors for the Main Street Living Show, and so uh, Chad won't be available to edit our program if we record next Wednesday, so that's why we did two tonight, and it's still in progress. Um, just a hello again, everyone. I see we got some people starting to come in now, and good to have you all. Let's see if I can get my my names up here. There we go. Oh, that's not what we wanted to do. Well, I know there's there's people coming in here. Here we go. Let's try that one. Nope. Well, let's see. I'm not going to get them, so I don't know who's coming in. It does it to me every time. Oh, there we go. Robin is watching, Don and Eileen, and Ellen May. Good to have you with us tonight, or with me. I'm all alone tonight. Hey, Keith, how are you doing? Thanks for coming in tonight on uh, Facebook Live. I am alone tonight. Hey, Pam, so don't let that chase you away. Arden, Linda, good to have you with us. Hello, Pam. Yes, uh, recording is a little bit different tonight because we've recorded two services. So actually, I started at 2.30 this afternoon and uh, did the liturgy and the sermon for uh, the 16th and the 23rd. So the Jacob's down now uh, doing praise music for the 16th and the 23rd, and uh, the hymns have already been recorded. So Maxine is gone, and Holly and Susie were here as well. Hi, Max Curlin. Uh, I might have a joke out of the joke book tonight, Max, because I'm all by myself, so I don't have anyone to try to take my joke book away from me, like happens when the others are with me. They don't think my jokes are very funny, and, you know, they're really not, but it's just uh, maybe I'm the funny one. I don't know, but uh, that's what's happening. I guess I'll talk about phase three as well. I met with the task force, the COVID Zion task force last Tuesday. And uh, we announced uh, then last Wednesday and this weekend that we're uh, moving into phase three of our plan. There's It's a four phase plan. Phase four then is going back to normal Bible studies and normal activities around the church here. And, but we're in phase three right now, which means uh, we're still uh, registering for services. Services are at 8 a.m. traditional, full traditional service with communion this Sunday. And then a 10 o'clock service as well, our contemporary service at 10 a.m. And it's Confirmation Sunday this Sunday. And you need to sign up for that service as well through the Sign of Genius, just like we've been doing for our uh, modified in-person services. So we're going to place 150 people in the sanctuary instead of 75 and we're going to ask you to wear masks, and we're going to ask you to seat yourself in a manner that you are comfortable with. I think with those uh, numbers in the sanctuary, we can still distance ourselves in an appropriate manner. So the blue tape will be gone as well. Uh, just doing the math with the blue tape up and um, with the amount of pews we have available for 150 people, we'd be crunching people together in the pews to make that happen. So we're going to let you come into the sanctuary and uh, socially distance as you feel comfortable. Of course, the balcony is open for people that want to go upstairs and sit as well. And we are still recording as well. So the recorded service will be up on Sunday morning about 8 o'clock as usual with all of the uh, the attachments to it. 
just like has been going on and we'll continue to do that until we move into phase four. Hi Renee, I'm glad you're watching. So I'm just talking about phase three right now and uh, we've also been discussing moving forward as well once we go into phase four. We're looking at uh, continuing to uh, do something as well but we don't want to extend our resources out so much where we're going to continue to record. We're investigating doing a live cast, not just with a cell phone, but uh, setting up some cameras in various places in the sanctuary so we can continue to live cast one of our services on Sunday morning when we move into phase four. And that's not happened yet. We're in phase three, so we'll still have the recorded services coming to you Sunday morning. Uh, hi, Reagan. You're watching. Thanks for tuning in. Susan Crank. Uh Good to have you with us. Allison, how hi to you as well. Um, I'm the only one here tonight on Facebook Live. Um, the ladies, Ches and, and Rachel, are, have other obligations. Jacob is down recording praise team music right now in the sanctuary. The schedule got switched around a little bit because of his soccer. If those that don't, you don't know, he's continues on as the head soccer coach for the girls varsity team at Brandon High School. So he's involved in that right now, but he's down in the sanctuary. So we switched the hymns and the, and the praise music uh, recording times. Plus we're recording uh, two services tonight as well. Uh, hi, Eric. Glad you came in. Happy Wednesday to you. We're recording two services tonight, like I said. For some of you that have heard this already, I apologize, but there's new people on. The Main Street Living crew is the same crew that uh, runs the equipment for our Wednesday night recording sessions for the services that you see on Sunday, or the service. So they have to go next week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, to Rapid City, record pastors, uh, pick up all their equipment, and then drive to Pier, and then reset it up, and then repack it up, but then record pastors and peers so uh, Chad won't have time to edit our our service for the 23rd uh, next week so that's why we recorded it tonight as well so he'd have time to edit so let me say without Chad and and the gang out there the Main Street living people uh, there's another Greg that helps us and Chad and Mary Ann and Hell and Jean helped us today uh, we couldn't be doing uh, the recorded services <clears throat> excuse me without them um, so we think them very very much a um, couple words that I guess I've been hearing a lot about lately as as we're on the cusp of many things uh, some schools have started already and uh, some schools have not but are on the verge of starting and then our public schools are a little bit later out towards the end of the month but uh, anxiety and fear anxiety and fear seem to be some words that I hear circulating a lot out there uh, and there is don't get me wrong there's a level of anxiety facing the children and the parents and the school teachers and administrators there's anxiety facing us uh, the congregational shepherds us here in the staff trying to figure out to do the right thing for all those here at the church the lay leaders uh, the leadership here at the church there's a level of anxiety uh, the policy makers as well um, there is anxiety. There's what I'm thinking is a pandemic anxiety for pandemic times. It seems to be uh, the way the world is going now. Um, and, and the fear of physical, emotional, spiritual, financial disorder and disease, it's real. Don't get me wrong. It's very real due to this COVID-19 virus and the accompanying anxiety comes with the fear, the contemplation, the worrying of what could or might happen or uh, to us or maybe to a loved one. It's debilitating, this anxiety caused by uh, uh, fear. It's, it, it's debilitating in and of itself. In fact, anxiety in, its, in itself can be debilitating in and of itself. But I guess as I've been trying to uh, do some little work on these two words, fear and anxiety, there's a difference. I think anyway, and, and what I found in investigating these two words, there's a difference between fear and anxiety. Uh, 
Fear is distress due to an immediate and true threat to one's safety or health. Uh, let me say it again. Fear, fear is distress due to an immediate and true threat to one's safety or health. Fear causes us to freeze. Fear causes us to flee and fight the immediate threat. Fear, in a way, you can say, protects us. Usually, fear doesn't last for a long, long time. Anxiety, though, hi, little Robbie, good to have you with us. Anxiety, though, on the other hand, I, I, I believe is a, is a learned kind of a memory-induced response to future potential stress. Uh, some concern may be temporarily helpful, I mean, okay, so I think about taking a test or having to perform. Being anxious about an upcoming test can cause us to study harder or whatever that upcoming event may be. It helps us to perform better. But anxiety usually and generally is more debilitating than fear. It causes us to function less effectively, anxiety. And actually, anxiety can make us sick, it seems. And uh, I don't have a whole lot of experience personally, but I've watched people with anxiety, and I guess I've seen that, where uh, the, the functionality of the person actually is less effective, and people can become physically sick from anxiety. So there's a difference, I'm saying, uh, as far as I can see, between fear and anxiety. Um, physiologically, uh, nervous system reaction and stress hormone release, fear and anxiety uh, trigger similar physical and emotional responses. I would have to say that most of us know that feeling, right? We call it the stress response. You get a flush face, you get a high heart rate, the blood pressure increases, maybe you sweat, stomach ache, headache. That's just to name a few, and I'm sure people that experience uh, anxiety at a high level can name off a lot more than I just named off. But uh, once we face and deal with our fear, which is generally short-lived, like I said, or when the immediate threat goes away with fear, it seems our body returns to a more comfortable set point, if you will, right? Our pulse goes down, our blood pressure reduces, we breathe, we relax, maybe our headache and the, the stomach aches, disappear. But, f but from what I've experienced and read now, anxiety is longer lasting. Anxiety is longer lasting because it continues uh, to, in our mind and body, releasing these stress, these stress hormones. So we remain, we remain continuously vigilant. We, contain, we continue on high alert all the time with anxiety, and it messes people up physically and emotionally. And I would dare to say spiritually at times as well. Anxiety exhausts people. And COVID-19 produces plenty of fear. What is really debilitating us and our children, though, I think is anxiety. So why are we anxious? Why do we have anxiety? Well, I would suggest that we're anxious because this pandemic, it's producing fast, overwhelming, rapid changes in all things that we do, it seems like. And change has always been part of our personal family and community life. But when we consider history, we see that change usually occurs to a culture over a very long period of time, maybe even decades, it takes for, uh, uh, as history shows, for things to change in our culture. It takes decades or, or, or maybe years, but it's not commonly over days and months where change this fast occurs. I mean, actually, if you watch any of the media and if you overwatch it, you're knowing that we're experiencing change by the minute. And that change is being fed to us on a continuous loop through all sorts of electronic communications, whether it's your phone, your TV, the radio, it's all over the place. I mean, I, I guess just what are you doing right now? 
I mean, I'm on Facebook on my phone, on a device. I'm not looking at the COVID numbers or what have you, but just just think about what you are doing right now. Check check about people who are in your eyesight. Are they on their handheld devices? <laughs> you know, how often do we pull out our smartphones and or, or glance at our computer for the latest bulletin, the current infection rate or death rate or hospitalization rate? the uh, latest political, social, or medical experts' recommendation. What is this doing to our health? What's it doing to our family's well-being? What's it doing to your child's feeling of safety and comfort? I'm just reflecting some things that I've been thinking about. I really don't have any answers, but I've been thinking about fear and anxiety, uh, two words that seem to be thrown about a lot during these times of going back to school, going back to work, whatever it may be for you. Well, let's see who was all tuned in yet. I'm feeling anxious. Give me some good news. Oh, thanks, Renee. John and Mary Lou, Jill Powell's watching. Right. All right. Zion Youth is watching. Must be Jacob down there or something. How can he do that? Play music and watch. Hi, Jill. You know, this uh, course that I take, the pre-wedding... Glenda, how are you? The course that I take our pre-wedding couples through. Pam Clute, hi, how are you doing? Uh, Zion Lutheran Church is watching. Must be for Maxine. The premarital course that I take folks through here at Zion when I do premarital counseling or time together it's called me to we uh, and that made me kind of think of this next part that I'd like to talk about uh, turning the me into we um, but first hi Nancy you know Maxine this isn't about you but in my previous uh, life, I've had a few secretaries, and uh, one time I asked the secretary we were interviewing, I said, I need a secretary who can spell. And so I said, can you spell the word Mississippi? And this particular secretary candidate answered, do you want me to spell the river or the state? <laughs> I laugh at my own jokes. That's right. Uh, that's all I got. That's the best it gets. Do you want me to spell the river or the state? Do I see? I have to explain my jokes over and over and over again. Well, no one responded to that one. Probably everyone dropped off now. Sick. <laughs> that must be Maxine tuning in from home, um, turning the me into we, you know, you take, take, take that, that M on the me and you flip it over into a W. Hey, thanks, Allison. She's laughing and you turn it into a we. So that's kind of the mindset here, turning me into we. Um, I think we need to realize that anxiety is normal in, in human beings reflex response, if you will, to rapid change especially when uh, uncertainty and risk levels are high. And we have that, right? That's a reality. There's uncertainty and there's risk levels that we take every time we go out and be among others. So when there's a large number of unknowns, a large number of variables, as there are with this pandemic, our nervous system, if you will, reaches its memory switchboard to find the defaults and past learned strategies to deal with these present threats that are coming against us. Instead of developing adaptive and collaborative responses to deal with this distress, we tend to fall back to those old habits. It's easy to fall back, like being anxious. And maybe even becoming to a point of being dysfunctional because of the anxiety. See, we tend to fall back to those coping mechanisms that are totally focused on ourselves. That's where the me comes in. The me 
within us. And what's best for the me, or, you know, what's best for me to deal with this trouble? What's best for me to deal with this worry? What's best for me to deal with this anxiety, with this situation, these unknowns, these changes, because we don't know what lies ahead? Now, let me talk a little bit about Scripture. Hi, Melanie. Good to have you with us. She laughed at my joke, too. There's more coming, let me tell you. Scripture is filled with references of human default to me strategies, you know, within you, within us. Uh, the, the Apostle, hi, hi, Joyce. Good to have you with us. The Apostle Paul, he enlightens us in this regard, though. He talks about the spiritual natural old Adam, uh, the psycho, the, the psych, the, the, uh, the psych, psychos, the psychos within us, the old Adam, that's the Greek word for the natural old Adam within us. The old Adam, see, he's focused inside, he's turned into the me. The new Adam, the new Akas, is informed or organized by the Holy Spirit, the new Adam, organized by the Holy Spirit responding to these distresses of human life by moving outward into the relationship with Christ and a relationship with one another, and that's what we call the we. So the me is focused inward, and the we is uh, being led by the Holy Spirit and formed and organized by the Holy Spirit when responding to the distresses in life. Now the Holy Spirit, I want you to know, and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Hi, Linnell. Good to have you with us. You are filled with the Holy Spirit. You've been baptized as the God's water and word came together, right? God came down all the way and deposited his inheritance within you, which is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit walks with you, not only with you, but in front of you, above you, behind you, within you, below you, as we deal with these anxieties in this pandemic time, especially when we deal with our children and teachers and administrators and restaurant workers and uh, store workers. I don't know. Uh, it's it's very short here tonight. I, I hope this helps. I, I guess I attempted to put something together that would give both a theological and maybe a little practical suggestion to help us not not just survive, but actually maybe to grow and thrive through these days. We we know that the Lord works all good things to those who love him, Romans 8, 28. So I guess what I'm saying, dear friends in Christ, is that we are not facing these times alone. God promises to be present, God promises to be active, and he promises it for today. Not sometime in the future, not just in the past, but he promises it for today. Philippians 4 Chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. I've said it many, several times as we've been together here on Facebook Live on these many Wednesday nights we've been together. The Apostle Paul writes, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. So anxiety and fear, they're two different things that have different effects on us human beings. But in all of it, we know we're filled with the Holy Spirit as he walks surrounding us during these times of change and unknown. Um, let me say this. Uh, there's a, this pastor friend of mine, he asked his confirmands to give a Bible verse pertaining to marriage. And one young man quickly responded, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. <laughs> oh, I think I'm so funny. Hi, Lori Brunick, how are you? I hope you're laughing at my joke. I did have another one marked here. I can find it, and you're probably wishing I can't. Oh, where'd it go? My bookmarker fell out. There's a, a pastor friend of mine as well. He was 
invited over to dinner and he was asked to lead the prayer for the meal. And after a very brief prayer, little Fred, sitting at the table, probably about seven years old, said approvingly to the pastor, you don't pray so long when you're hungry, do you? <laughs> okay, then. Oh, goodness. Well, thank you, Eric, for the ha-ha-ha. Hi, Mary Lou. Good to have you with us tonight. I'm glad you enjoy my sad sense of humor. Well, like I've said earlier, uh, before some of you have come on, I'm here alone tonight. Uh, Rachel and Chez have previous obligations, and hymns and praise music got switched around tonight in the recording uh, because Jacob is still the head uh, uh, girls' soccer coach at Brandon Valley High School. So he was coming in uh, about 6 or 6.30 or so to do the praise music. We're recording, we recorded two services tonight, the 16th and the 23rd, uh, because the Main Street Living crew has to go to Pier in Rapid City next week, and Chad won't have time to edit our programs. He has to record and edit all of the Main Street Living recordings. I don't know, probably, I'd say probably 15, 16, 17 pastors they will be recording in a couple days, one day in Rapid, one day in Pier, and then back here, so... They were down there starting to pack up all their equipment already for the stuff that they aren't using to record the praise team to, to get ready to blast off next week. So uh, We are in phase three here at Zion Lutheran Church. I'll repeat that as well, which means that at 8 a.m. we have a full traditional service. At 10 a.m. we have a full contemporary service. Uh, this coming Sunday, the 10 a.m. service is the day of confirmation. We have six confirmands that uh, we're excuse me, going to get confirmed usually we do that in may but because of the circumstances here we are and uh we're going to ask you to wear masks in the sanctuary as well we're going to do that and uh we're also uh going to ask you to uh, uh, uh sit in uh, your own place but then stay uh as comfortable away from folks as you are i can't imagine there being 150 people in the sanctuary for either service uh, based on the past attendance on our, our uh, in-person modified services, the 8 o'clock service, we were probably getting 20 to 30. Uh, the 10 o'clock service from 40 to 65. And then the Monday night service, anywhere from 10 to 20. And we're done with the Monday night services now as well, just to uh, remind you. So uh, that's what's happening. Uh, I, I don't know what the registration numbers are for the services today. I looked last night. So for the 8 a.m. traditional, I think there was probably about 20 registered. And for the 10, uh, about 40 or 50 or so. And that was last night. So as you can see, I don't think we'll be near 150 for either service. So if you're uncomfortable coming, um, uh, that is, that's your decision. And just remember, we're still recording. And the services will be up on Sunday, or the service will be up Sunday morning at about 8 o'clock, just like they have been with all the attachments on the email and Facebook for uh, you to find us. And we'll continue to do that through phase until we start phase four, and we don't know when that's going to be. Uh, one thing we've been investigating, I guess I'll add, and I'll let a little, a little bit out of the bag here, is that we're investigating as we move to phase four, we're going to stop recording on Wednesday nights, but we're looking at uh, possibly uh, going to a live cast situation on Sunday mornings and uh, not record, but live cast either the 8 or the 10 o'clock service. And of course, we're going to need some extra equipment to do that. So we're in the stages of investigating that because I know a lot of you aren't comfortable in coming back to church yet, and we still want to provide the services for you. But uh, the resources that we're extending to try to continue these recordings uh, past. Uh, phase four, I think, are, are going to get exhausting for the recording team. So uh, that's what we're investigating and looking at now. And hopefully uh, by phase four, we can have all of that complete. So we've got some smart people on that already, and uh, they're investigating the equipment and some of the things that we're going to need to make that happen. And then maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe that'll go on to infinity, uh, uh, the live casting of, of our services on Sunday for those that don't uh, feel like are comfortable coming into the sanctuary because of the COVID-19 situation. Um, 
that's kind of what's happening behind the scenes. Um, pretty quiet here tonight. And uh, Maxine's gone already, so she's not walking through. And you get no music from Jacob. You just get silly jokes from Pastor Greg. That's all. Um, so, let's see. Well, it's about 5 after 7. Let's see. Yeah. Glenda, thank you. Yeah. Chad Zinnel is... Uh... Hi, Sarah. Good to have you with us. Yeah, the Main Street Living Team. Uh, wonderful. Chad Zinnel... Marianne Zinnel, Gene Schultz, Hell Friends, and uh, a gentleman from another church named Greg, and I'm blanking out for his last name. I'm so sorry. He's our teleprompter operator, and he's part of the Main Street Living Crew. And I'm sorry, Greg. I don't remember your last name, but thank you all for doing such great work and uh, allowing us to proclaim the gospel out. I mean, we're still getting, uh, like, I'm guessing the last time I looked for last Sunday was was right around 400 views of our of our uh, recorded service and and that doesn't include our podcast and the shares and and everything else that's going on. I think there was about seven shares, so each share has so many values of of views as well. So uh, Noble. Oh, Greg Noble, that's his last name. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, Maxine. Noble, Greg Noble is the teleprompter operator. Yes, yes. So that's the team that's really making it happen. Without those folks, we wouldn't be doing what we're doing and putting out that recording the way we're doing. So we really, really appreciate them and celebrate them for what the, they're doing and the time that they're giving because Chad not only is here for the recording, then he has to go home and edit and try to cut out all my boo-boos when I say, oops, can we start over again? So then he uh, most of the time successfully cuts that stuff out. Sometimes I think he leaves it in on purpose. I'm just saying that. Um, that's about what I have for you tonight on Facebook Live. I've uh, shared a few thoughts on fear and anxiety God's with you. The Holy Spirit walks with you through all of this. He never leaves you. He surrounds you with His presence and reminds you that God loves you so much that He sent His Son down to become one of us in human skin and bone so that we can go with Him to heaven to be with Him forever. And that's that's the ultimate promise. He, Jesus said that we're going to have trouble in this in this life. And part of it is dealing with this COVID-19 pandemic and all of the changes that are coming about, which cause fear and anxiety. And so we just need to, uh, I guess I've seen a couple people, faith over fear, uh, know that uh, God's word is powerful. And if you pour yourself into that, he'll pour his Holy Spirit into you to help you ease your anxiety and fear so you can walk in his way. It's not going to be perfect, right? Uh, we want it to be perfect, but we live our life in a fallen world. So uh, things happen. Well, I'm going to pray. And uh, uh, then I'm going to say good night uh, from Facebook Live tonight. Uh, thank you all for, for coming and being with us. We'll, we will not be here next Wednesday. Uh, we're not recording because we did two services tonight. We're taking a week off, and uh, we will be back the following Wednesday to do Facebook Live and start recording again for the 30th. And we also uh, have live uh, full services this Sunday at 8 and 10. You need to sign up with the Sign Up Genius. It's the same link you've been using or call the office, and we'll be happy to get you registered for services. So let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the church and her witness of hope to the world, that in every city, every town, every home across the globe, the voice of the Lord may be heard by faithful preaching of the gospel. We pray for those who labor in the fields of the Lord. We pray for the Lord to raise up laborers for his harvest field, that their work may be blessed and they may be protected and defended against the enemies of the kingdom. We pray for our synodical president, we pray for our congregation, 
We pray for all pastors. We pray for resources to accomplish what the Lord has given us to do in spite of all the obstacles and all the temptations, all the fear and anxiety that are out in the world. We pray that you would unite us in the faith so we may serve you with joy. We pray for all who live under the flag of our nation, for those who govern this country for causes of justice and peace, that we may all be given grace and freedom to serve the Lord honorably and in accord with his word. We pray for the poor and the hungry, the homeless and the unemployed. We pray for the oppressed, that the Lord would grant them mercy and that we may help to relieve their suffering and want. We pray for the sick, that the Lord would grant them healing. For the wounded in spirit, that the Lord would make them whole. We pray for the grieving, that the Lord would comfort them. Especially all of those affected by the ongoing pandemic and its fear and anxiety as we face the unknowns that lie ahead. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to give us what we need in this time. We remember you, we need you, we love you. And we know through your Son you have redeemed us and made us righteous in your eyes. We thank you for that gift of your grace, won to us by a cross and an empty tomb. Let those be the things in this time of fear and anxiety that we focus our eyes on, the author and perfecter of our faith. Lord, we thank you for this time together this evening, and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, thank you all for tuning in tonight to Facebook Live. Uh, it's been good to be with you, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Two weeks, we'll see you again here on Facebook Live. All right. God bless. We miss you all, and we hope to see as many of you as you feel comfortable this coming Sunday for worship in person for full services. We're very excited to offer. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.